Welcome back to this third video about correlation. In this video, we have a look at how the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is calculated and compare it to the Pearson correlation coefficient. In the previous lecture about the Pearson correlation coefficient, we used the following example data on body weight and body height based on six individuals. Based on this data, we estimated the Pearson correlation coefficient to 0.898 and the associated p-value to 0 0.015. We could therefore conclude that there was a significant correlation between body weight and body height. To calculate the sample Pearson correlation coefficient, we divided the covariance by the product of the standard deviations. The Spearman's rank correlation coefficient is actually calculated by the same formula. The only difference is that the x and y variables are based on ranks instead of their original values. To calculate the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, we therefore begin by ranking the data of each variable. For example, this is the smallest value for the variable body weight, which means that it gets the rank 1. A body weight of 62 kilos is the second smallest number, which therefore results in the rank of 2. We continue to fill in the ranks for the other data points as well. Next, we rank the numbers for the second variable, where the value 157 gets the rank 1, because it is the smallest value out of the six body heights. The second shortest person gets the rank 2, and so forth. We fill in the other ranks as well. If you happen to have ties in the data, like in this example, where person number 3 and 4 have the same body height. The rank value is then the mean of the corresponding ranks, which is 3.5 in this example. However, our example data does not include any ties. We'll now use the exact same equation as we used to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. The only difference is that we now use the ranks instead of the original data. The covariance of the ranks is 3.3 and the standard deviation of the individual ranks is 1.87. This results in a Spearman rank correlation coefficient of 0 0.94. Another simple formula can be used when we have no ties in our data, where d is the difference between the two ranks of each observation. Since we do not have any ties in our data, we can also use this equation, where we begin by calculating the differences between the ranks. Since the ranks are identical for these four observations, the differences between these ranks is zero, whereas the difference between these two ranks is negative one. The sum of these squared differences is two, and if we multiply by the constant six, we get 12 in the numerator. We divide by the sample size times the squared sample size minus 1, which is 210. 1 minus 12 over 210 is 0 0.94, which is the same correlation coefficient that we calculated earlier. When we have no ties, both these equations will result in the same correlation coefficient. Note that when we have a positive correlation, we expect that the ranks are quite similar for the two variables. For example, a low body weight is usually associated with a short person, whereas a high body weight is usually associated with a tall person. We'll now have a look at an example of a negative correlation from our previous car sales data. We see that there is a decline in price for older cars. For negatively correlated data, we expect that high ranks are paired with low ranks, and that low ranks are paired with high ranks. This is exactly what we see in this example. For example, we see that the lowest rank in the age of the cars is paired with the highest price, which means that the newest car has the highest price, whereas the cheapest car is one of the oldest cars in the dataset. Since we have no ties, we can use the simple equation to calculate the correlation coefficient. We therefore begin by calculating the differences between the ranks. Then we plug in these differences and calculate the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient to negative 0.8.
Note that the correlation coefficient is less than zero in this example, since there is a negative relationship between price and age. We'll now have a look at some of the differences between the Pearson and the Spearman correlation coefficient so that we know which method that is most appropriate to use for a certain dataset. Remember that the Pearson correlation requires that both variables should have a continuous scale, whereas the Spearman correlation allows that one or both variables can have either an ordinal scale or a continuous scale. The Spearman correlation can therefore be used for variables on both continuous and ordinal scale. For example, one can use the Spearman correlation to test if there is an association between pain score 1 to 10, which has an ordinal scale, and the concentration of a certain drug in the blood, which has a continuous scale. The Pearson correlation evaluates the linear relationship between two variables, which means that the scatter of the data should be linear. In contrast, the Spearman correlation evaluates if there is a monotonic relationship between the two variables, which means that the two variables tend to move in a consistent direction. The Spearman correlation can therefore be used on both linear and some nonlinear data like the one shown in this figure, where both variables increase consistently. However, when the data show a non-monotonic pattern like in this case, none of the methods are appropriate to use. Another important difference is that the Pearson correlation is very sensitive to outliers, whereas the Spearman correlation is robust to outliers like most other non-parametric tests. As an example, let's consider the following data, where no correlation seems to exist between the two variables x and y. If we compute the correlation coefficient and the p-value from both tests, we see that both methods would result in a p-value that is greater than 0 0.05 and a correlation coefficient close to zero. Both methods therefore tell us that the two variables are uncorrelated. However, if we would include the following data point that is far away from the other data points, the Pearson correlation now results in a very low p-value, whereas the Spearman correlation results in a relatively high p-value. In this case, the two methods therefore show completely different results. The Pearson correlation coefficient is very strong and highly significant, whereas the Spearman correlation coefficient is weak and non-significant. Since the Pearson correlation is highly sensitive to outliers, the Spearman correlation is recommended if outliers are present, since it is more robust against extreme values. This was the end of this lecture about correlation. Thanks for watching.